So, uh, 17th of December, uh, it is our last meeting before Christmas and before New Year break. And uh, it's also my last uh, uh, introduction to our meetings. Uh, in January, we will have uh, three meetings with your presentations, starting with, on uh, January 7th with uh, Carolina Kauwezak, uh, who is still looking for a topic, and Nikola Wrublewska, uh, who is preparing a presentation on Osho, an Indian mystic and founder of uh, Rheinisch uh, religious movement. I'm not very familiar with, so I'm looking forward to learn from this presentation, uh, which uh, should be very interesting since uh, his books, uh, this Osho um, founder and mystic are well known and popular well, also in many languages, also in Polish. So I'm really uh, very uh, interested to, to know how uh, Nicola will present it. And uh, let us hope that uh, also Carolina will send me the topic of her presentation. And it will be perhaps a good um, a custom that those of you who will have presentation, uh, please uh, send me a uh, few days uh, before, perhaps the weekend before, the topic and perhaps some uh, uh, bibliography which uh, could uh, facilitate uh, our uh, participation in your in your presentations it will be also good to have some questions uh, from you which will allow us to enter in the topic and also to uh, deepen some aspects and all of course uh, should have some uh, direct or indirect connection with um, post-secularism, uh, but the possibilities are really many, so it's up to your imagination, which uh, please use uh, creatively and uh, I hope that this last and second part of our conversatorium will be really enriching for each of us. So now to, to my uh, last topic. As I uh, said already uh, in our uh, last meeting, it will be uh, the problem or the movement or the phenomenon of um, Pentecostalism, of course related to uh, post-secularism. Uh, put uh, on um, campus platform a book, uh, only one book this time, although the literature is really very, very rich and you can study the topic from many different um, sides. Uh, one of you decided even to write an essay on it and we have already an exchange of uh, information what uh, should uh, she uh, read ab ab about, uh, you know, you can focus on, on Africa, for, for example, or Latin America or Asia, where Pentecostalism is developing in, in a very dynamic way. So the, uh, the book which I put um, is perhaps the most uh, uh, including uh, Pentecostalism in the history of Christianity, or better, in the possible development of Christianity. In fact, the title of the book is The Next Christendom. Uh, this is very interesting why he, um, because the author of the book is uh, Philip uh, Jenkins, why he used this uh, Christendom and not Christianity. Christendom is the uh, equivalent of uh, Latin Christianitas, and it was uh, a term describing uh, Christianity as um, a civilization from, let us put it, uh, 
fifth to fifteenth or sixteenth century, when when uh, Christian religion was dominant and practically was the only one in uh, European uh, civil in European uh, continent. The other were all eliminated or marginalized, uh, and then the Christianity was was the dominant one. So perhaps he used it uh, just to say that uh, this dominance uh, is disappearing. Is any more? Uh, we 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 cannot speak uh, anymore about domination of Christianity, because the dominant. Uh, world view in this moment in 20 and 21st century is uh, secularism secularism eclectism syncretism all possible terms which are indicating a, a, a huge confusion which we have uh, in our continent uh, nevertheless philip jenkins in in his book the next christendom which you are kindly invited to to read uh, particularly the introduction, but also uh, one chapter dedicated exactly to, to Pentecostal uh, movement, the day of Pentecost. And you will find uh, really inspiring. You will see the frame of what is going on with, with Pentecostalism as why and why it is so, so relevant. Uh, perhaps you remember when uh, I spoke about uh, Peter Berger's uh, uh, theory of secularization, and after that he, um, as a proponent of secularization theory, was one of the most um, radical um, opponents to the theory of secularization, which we, he developed for many years. Uh, and one of the reasons why he changed his ideas or his idea on secularization was exactly his uh, contact with the Pentecostal uh, movement or Pe Pentecostal um, uh, Christianity, uh, one of the most vibrant, vivid, uh, uh, unpredictable, and fastest growing uh, religious movement in the world. Every year, uh, we have something like 20 million new um, uh, followers of Pentecostalism. So in, in uh, Jenkins, you can, you can see the beginning of this movement and development and geographical division and so on and so on. And uh, perhaps the, the one uh, of the most uh, interesting and perhaps uh, also uh, important question is why this uh, massive uh, development of this new uh, religious uh, movement and exactly in the moment when uh, we see in, in Western uh, civilization a decline of uh, religious belief. Uh, why so? Uh, the, the, the possible answer is um, not easy, uh, but uh, one is possible that uh, the people who traditionally were Catholic or were part of many Protestant churches uh, felt not at home anymore in their respective uh, confessions. I'm speaking about confessions because the uh, Pentecostal movement is the Christian movement. We are not uh, dealing with uh, a syncretic movement, which uh, are in including uh, followers of different religions like Judaism, Islam, or, or Far East religions. We are still in, in, inside of Christianity. And most of the... Um, members of uh, Pentecostal movement are former uh, members of different churches. So now perhaps a few words uh, uh, about etymology, from where uh, this uh, name strange perhaps uh, is coming from. Uh, 
and Pentecostal, what it means. It's a Greek term uh, meaning 50. 50, penta, penta, pentagonal, you know, you can easily uh, find many uh, concepts uh, which have this five in, in its roots. It means 50, 50 days after Pesach. Uh, and it was uh, the Jewish uh, feast, the feast of the weeks. And uh, since Pentecostalism has nothing to do with uh, Judaism, is a Christian phenomenon, but nevertheless, as we already know, uh, Christianity is a daughter religion uh, of Judaism. So even uh, the most basic feasts, uh, ceremonies, uh, uh, holidays are uh, rooted in, in Judaism. So Jewish uh, Pesach is Christian uh, Easter. And so and the same uh, when um, Jesus was celebrating not uh, Easter <laughs> because he was a Jew, he was celebrating uh, uh, Pesach, Jewish Pesach, Jewish festival. And after his death, uh, and as Christian believe, his resurrection, uh, the, most of his uh, followers were Jewish, all were Jewish, uh, were also uh, waiting for this next uh, Jewish festival or Jewish feast uh, of the weeks. Uh, and what happened, and this is exactly the very name of Pentecostalism, this Holy Spirit descended upon them. And this is the, the, the term, the, the real event, which changed completely the life. You can read the description of this event in the Act of the Apostles, the, 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 the historical uh, narrative of uh, the, grown, the beginning of Christianity, uh, you see how uh, the apostles, particularly Peter, with uh, 12 other or 11, because Judas uh, committed suicide, as you know. So what is important that this uh, event, this descent of uh, f fire, of Holy Spirit, changed completely the Life. They started to speak languages, they started to heal sick people. You know, we entire book of uh, Act of the Apostle is full of these miracles. And uh, the Pentecostal movement, as uh, I said, was born at the beginning of 20th century in America. So for us, uh, Americanists, it's very important that this is the American uh, phenomenon. Uh, some of them had the similar experience. They felt that Holy Spirit came upon them. They were able to understand languages, the gift of tongues. Uh, they were able to, to heal people just putting on them hands, etc., etc. And this modest movement, the return of uh, uh, religious experience to the beginning of the church gave a uh, name to this Pentecostal movement. Uh, and uh, why I uh, connect also Pentecostalism with the Catholic Church, because we have also in the Catholic Church uh, uh, a similar movement, but we call them a charismatic movement. So charismatic movement means the same that you are still Catholic, but nevertheless, you, uh, for, for you, more important is this being part of this charismatic uh, community. So I hope that we in class, we will have a very uh, good uh, discussion because there's um, many questions which we can ask is why the people are dissatisfied with the present state 
uh, of the Catholic Church or many Protestant churches? Why they decided to, to join this movement? Why this is the fastest growing movement? Why, as Jenkins uh, put, uh, put it uh, clearly, we will have in 2050 one billion of, of, of uh, members of this uh, movement. So it's uh, extremely uh, fascinating movement and I hope we will have a good discussion. So please read, uh, bring to our class uh, your questions and uh, let us have a vivid discussion uh, and perhaps we will come to some conclusions.